U.S. election news. These are these are big changes coming down on the election cycle and what it means for the United States. And as we said earlier, Democrats might not be in as much of a pickle as they used to be just four months ago. Let's talk about it. Now that we are nearly through the primary election calendar, it's time to see where the parties stand and the state of the political landscape. Only three primary days remain before the midterms on November 8th. August 23rd includes Florida, New York, and Oklahoma. September 6th, just Massachusetts. And September 13th has Delaware, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. When we entered the primary election season, the GOP appeared to be poised to sweep, completely blow the fuck out Democrats in the midterms. Republicans were counting on dissatisfaction with the economy as their primary weapon against the Democrats in the midterms. They hope to focus on inflation, crime, and immigration to highlight why Democrats are bad for America. And then, out of nowhere, the SCOTUS overturned Roe v. Wade, red states began banning abortion, inflation has begun to ease, and Donald Trump's hand-picked candidates won primaries in key swing states. And Trump has once again taken over the news cycle. Taken together, this may not bode well for the Republican Party, 82 days before the midterm. So what does the political landscape look right now? Let's go ahead and dig into that. So political history tells us that one thing that usually benefits the party out of power in a midterm cycle is that it gets to reinvent itself after losing the most recent election. In 2009 to 2010, Republicans jettisoned George W. Bush and John McCain, embracing instead the Tea Party. In 2013 to 2014, the GOP moved on from Mitt Romney. And in 2017 to 2018, Democrats put Hillary Clinton's presidential loss behind them, sort of, and united around, quote, the resistance to Trump, which is true. Now, in 2021 and 2022, the GOP has lost the White House and control of the U.S. Senate. And they have not only not reinvented the party, but have cleaved even tighter to Trump. All signs at this moment indicate that the midterm election will not be a referendum on the Democratic Party, but that it will once again be a choice between Donald Trump and sanity. The GOP has continued to embrace the former president, even as January 6th committee investigations reveals his blatant attempts to overturn the 2020 election and in the wake of the DOJ investigation into possible, possible, possible violations of the Espionage Act. New headlines seem to appear in every news cycle, and nearly all are bad news for Trump's future. Just today, longtime Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisenberg pled guilty in federal court and agreed to testify against, yes, testify against, birdie singing singing, the Trump Organization when it comes to the trial this October. He was charged with accepting more than $1.7 million in off-the-books compensation from the former president's company, including untaxed perks like rent, car payments, and school tuition. These are called in-kind compensation, and they are supposed to be taxed like, taxed like any other kind of income. Now, quizzed repeatedly by the trial judge about whether he and the Trump Organization had committed criminal conduct in relation to the charges, Weisenberg repeatedly said again and again, yes, your honor. Now, Weisenberg pled guilty to 15 charges and faced a 15-year sentence. Under the agreement, though, he's expected to serve a five-month prison term at New York Rikers Island Jail. Then there is the DOJ investigation but promises to be a front and center item for the media. And there's the Georgia probe and several other legal issues the former president is currently facing. Democrats believe that the whole chain of startling events gives a political advantage, not least because of the way Trump has remained and remade the GOP in his own image. Quote, the bottom line is that the Democrats have a lot of ammunition against any Trump-aligned Republican going into the fall, said Democratic strategist Basil Smickle. Alan Lichman, a history professor at American University, said that the drama, quote, complicates a great deal. 
for Republicans now and in November. Quote, this is the following is a list of a whole quote from him. This looked like a good election for Republicans. Biden's approval ratings were low. Americans were unhappy with the economy. But there was a lot for the Republicans to run on. And the worst case for them is not to be running on any of those things, but instead be running on Trump grievances. Todd Belt, the director of the political management program at George Washington University's Graduate School for Political Management, summed it up thusly. Like anything involving Trump, it sucks, sucks all the oxygen out of everything else. And the Washington Examiner has reported that high-profile prim primaries have yielded some deeply polarizing Republican nominees. While the party has been consumed by debates over the best way to counter Democrats' recent political wins. Quote, I don't think the message has been as sharp as it needs to be, one longtime Republican strategist had said. It's about drawing a clear contrast. Now, I think there are folks trying to do that. But some of the other stuff, the election denial stuff, abortion, it's all kind of muddles the argument. But from coast to coast, in general election contests for the House, Senate, and governorship, the former president's allies are carrying the Republican banner. Less than three months before Election Day, trouble is abound. Democrats have staked leads in Senate and governor races in key swing states, with some Republican nominees plagued by weak campaign operations aside from whatever challenges they face with the voters. Quote, We are just beginning to communicate about the deep flaws their roster of candidates brings to these races, said Dave David Berns, uh, Bergstein, the spokesman for the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. Continuing on, he said, their personal and political vulnerabilities are going to continue to be a centerpiece for Senate campaigns in the months ahead. So, the, the examiner, rather, also looked at some specific races, saying that the downside of the, quote, mixed bag of Trump's slate of general, electors, candidate, uh, general election candidates is garling. They included Republican nominees for governor in blue states such as Illinois and Maryland, picked because they vocal proponents of Trump's unsupported, outright lies about stolen election. Even with Biden's low ratings and a political environment that favors the GOP, these nominees have virtually no chance of finishing out on top in November. Trump backed them anyways over centrist Republicans or have given the GOP a fighting chance to pull off some upset victories. So where does the political landscape stand now? Democrats are leading Republicans by four percentage points on a generic congressional ballot. A political morning consultant poll released Wednesday found that roughly 46% of registered voters would choose the Democratic candidate compared to 42% who would choose the Republicans if the election of Congress was held in their district today. The poll is just the latest one that shows Democrats outpacing their Republican counterparts. Another recent survey showed more respondents supporting a Democratic Party controlling Congress than the Republican Party. Now, the political morning consultant poll also showed that 42% of respondents approve of Biden's job as president, up three points from a poll the political morning consultant released just last week. Prop, that's probably due to a bunch of the wins that we're seeing in, in the recent days. A more good news for Democrats, after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade in June, Kansas reported a 1,038%, yes, yes, 1,038 increase in voter registration that week alone. New national polling suggests Kansas could be, or Kansas could be a microcosm of a broader trend. Several major demographics are flocking to the Democratic Party in droves since the fall of Roe. And with that, Fox News, yes, I'm saying Fox News, Fox, Fox News has a poll this week that shows fathers have moved from plus 20 for Republican Party to just two plus eight for the Democratic Party in August. A 28 point shift compared to a 13 support for Republican Party among male voters overall in May to 11 plus 11 support for Republicans in August. That same poll, which we have on screen now, found an eight point shift to support Democrats among white women compared with a seven-point shift among women voters in general, and a, a nine-point shift among suburban women, and a 10-point shift among women of color. You can see this here. That is huge. The overturning of Roe blew up, blew up voting, right? 
It just completely it changed the game. It can't change the game up. And and what's more, as you can see, I have these all these tabs up right now. There's more, there's more to come with some of these worky candidates, to say the least. Now, also between May and August, the same poll found parents as a whole went from supporting Republicans over Democrats by a 45 to 39 percent margin to supporting Democrats over Republicans by a 46 to 35 percent margin. The Washington Examiner also today reported that actually, we'll just go ahead and listen to it. So we have Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell over here saying, hey, you know what? Things aren't looking good for us, bruh. They're not looking good for us. Even good old Mitch. Good old Mitch McConnell is thinking it's bad. Let's listen. Objections on the midterm elections? I think that the, there's a, probably a greater likelihood of the House split the Senate. Senate races are just different. They're statewide. Uh, candidate quality has a lot to do with the outcome. Right now, we have a 50 50 Senate. In a 50 50 center, but I think when all is said and done, it's all we like to have an extremely close center, either our side up slightly or their side. So, that, my friends, is what the turtle, Mitch McConnell, had said. And we have smart people that join in all the time. North Countryman, friend of the show, said it best. The GOP is afraid it will be another 2010 2012. Good landscape in theory, but squandered by poor candidates. And boy, are they poor. But first, let's answer North Countryman's question. So North Countryman asked, asked, how bad does the GOP need to lose in the Senate for McConnell to call it a day as a leader? Um, you know, he's been doing this for his entire life. He is basically the de facto leader of the Republican Party when it comes to Senate things. Uh, even, I mean, he is the leader in the Senate, right? But I mean, more than that, he's help control a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, he's riding high on those judicial appointments, so to speak. Uh, I think he, he would have to, the, it would have to be a blowout. It'd have to be a blowout. Like, w Democrats would have to have a supermajority again. Um, and he would, and I don't know if he would, uh, he would quit. I think he would quit because uh, even he can't wrangle a caucus that would be that crazy at that point. Uh, that's just my thinking, though. Just my thinking. But let's get into some of these bad candidates like i said and they're so bad oh they're so bad they're so bad it's so funny it's sad it's very very sad very sad that uh they're this bad because roughly half the country thinks that this is great dr oz man of the people everybody let's watch i do some grocery shopping i'm at wegner's and I, my wife wants some vegetables for crudite right so here's the broccoli that's two bucks well, look how big that broccoli is, that. is bro there's some asparagus. That's, that's a lot of asparagus, dollars. man. Yep. Carrots. That's four more dollars. That's ten dollars of vegetables there. And then we need some guacamole. That's four dollars more. And she loves salsa. Yeah, there's salsa there. Six dollars. Must be a shortage of salsa. Guys, that's twenty dollars for crudite. And this doesn't include the tequila. I mean, <laughs> that's outrageous. We got Joe Biden to thank for this. Oh, man. Just okay. So that's cringe, but why is it cringe? Well, it's cringe because one, who the fuck puts guacamole and salsa in a crudite? Two, what the fuck is a crudite? I know what a crudite is. I'm not saying that other people don't, but most people, most people call that a veggie tray and we eat it with ranch, okay? And the things that he picked up, that bag of carrots was hell of big. That was probably like a two pound bag of carrots. Maybe even three. It was a huge bag of carrots. So that's actually probably a pretty good deal. And uh, yeah, guacamole and asparagus is always pretty expensive because it's one of those. It's a seasonal thing and you're getting it from around the world. And to show you how easy it is to troll the Dr. Oz, we're going to turn over now to my boy, John Fetterman with the veggie tray. Veggie tray. And he's like crudite. Am I right, guys? And he's blowing up on social media with this post. This is such a good, easy, easy, easy win for him. Super, super easy. And he's already selling stickers. He made 68000 Yes, $68,000.
selling stickers, making fun of Dr. Dr. Oz on this. Making fun of his crew to take comment. $68,000 on that alone. So that's just one thing. Now we have another one over here. We're going to go to J.D. Vance over here. All right. J.D. Vance, famed author of Hillbilly Elegy, book written to, to make the, uh, the loins lust over at the New York Times and making fun of now who's trying to court. Yes, yes, yes. Hillbilly Elegy was making fun of the exact people that he's trying to court right now. And he's trying to turn himself into an everyman when he was like a George Bushian Republican at some point. I don't know. When, you, when you're a craven political operative and you know, all you think about is power, you're going to do some fucked up things. And this is one of those. Let's listen to this. Now, this is a clip from, I want to say, 2021, 2021. 2021 speech he gave uh, that went viral at the time. It's going viral again because Tim Ryan, Democratic challenger to uh, not challenger, Democratic nominee for Senate in Ohio, going up to J- J.D. Vance, decided it would be uh, be good to bring it back up. And it is good to bring it back up. So let's listen. This is one of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace, which is this idea that like, well, OK, these marriages were fundamentally, you know, they were they were maybe even violent, but certainly they were unhappy. And so getting rid of them and making it easier for people to shift spouses like they change their underwear, that's going to make people happier in the long term. And maybe it worked out for the moms and dads, though I'm skeptical. But oh, it God. really didn't work out for the kids of those marriages. We're, we're going to listen to this. On the American the populace, which is this idea that, like, well, okay, these marriages were fundamentally, you know, they were they were maybe even violent. But cer- so a violent marriage is better for kids than a divorce? Are you kidding me, my guy? You're saying this to Republican women that have gotten divorced because of violent marriages. Not saying that Republicans are the only ones that commit violence against their women. Not saying that at all. Or anybody comes at me, all right? But women do vote more than men. You just can't say this stuff. Easy, easy, easy win for Tim Ryan on this one, all right? And then Herschel Walker's campaign is is actually doubling down, doubling, doubling, doubling down on this China bad air floating comment where somehow Chinese pollution is like replacing our clean air and whatever else it is. It's, It's a weird comment. There might be a little bit of truth to it, but it's just so inartfully made. And he's against doing things to help improve air quality in general because it costs money. He's doubling down on it. I've got a great comment in here from uh, Ishala. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hide that black eye for the kids, honey. Yes. Yes, that's what he's saying to him. It's disgusting. So we got Pennsylvania, Ohio, Georgia, and now... We're going to Wisconsin. And this is going viral again. The comments that he said in 2021, uh, just after the election, just after January 6th. Let's, uh, let's listen to Ron Johnson talk about how, uh, how he wasn't afraid of the megas. Then adding this. Had the tables been turned and President Trump won the election, and those were tens of thousands of Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters, I might have been a little concerned. Democrat. Yep. Yep, my friends, he's basically saying that uh, that because they were on his political side, he wasn't worried. They weren't going to come in. He's this old white guy, lovable, affable, not one of these Democrats, not one of these liberals. So he had nothing to worry about. So it was OK. It was OK. And he's going up against uh, Barnes in Wisconsin. And I'm sure that that's like, again, another easy win for Barnes. Now, why am I bringing these up? So I'm bringing these up because the path to the Senate runs through these districts. And it's these districts that are the Democrats are running away with, at least right now. Again, well, districts, I should say states. That is, again, Georgia, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Those are the four key races to watch. There's a couple of others. There's a there's a Senate race against Rand Paul in Kentucky. But those are the four that are going to be probably the tightest ones there. And as North Countryman says, of those, the Ron Johnson one's probably the tightest one. <music>